So we're going to attempt to paint me a sign on this canvas. And guys, this canvas is the 11 by 14 that came from Dollar Tree. Additionally, these brushes, this brush set, it also came from Dollar Tree. And I'm super excited about this because, guys, in this set, you have a number six flat, you have a number two flat, and you have a number six bristle brush from Dollar Tree. This is the stencil brush if you need to for your pouncing. So let's get started on this. What you'll want is you'll want you a palette. I use a flat plate because whenever you use a palette that has the holes in it, it's impossible to blend. But for blending, you need something that has a surface that you can actually put two colors together and blend them into your brush so that they work up the bristles. And I'll show you more of that as we go along. And then an array of different paint colors. Anything from yellows, greens, reds, blues, purples, depending on what you're painting. And of course, by all means, black and white. I wanted to tell you guys, this is a 100% natural cotton canvas. And it's great for, as it says, oil and acrylic paints. This is great to be framed or to make a frame around it so that it sets back. It is just great, and I could not believe my find. I could not believe this was at Dollar Tree. That just blew me away that this was at Dollar Tree. So hopefully your Dollar Tree will have a 11 by 14 canvas. Uh, they do have the 8 by 10s and they have the smaller ones as well. For this particular thing, I'm going to be putting the, I'm going to make this into a sign. And I am going to be hanging it up in my home. And I found this on Pinterest, this saying, and so I'm going to put some flowers on here. Thought I'd bring you guys along with me. Hello there. I'm sorry to interrupt you during the filming of this video. I'm Elizabeth, and this is the Dandy Soap DIY channel. Sayings that would inspire us and hopefully inspire you. This video that I've interrupted you in, I am demonstrating painting for beginners. And you can go right alongside of me and see how I put this together in full. Thank you so much for taking your time to view my video. If you like what you're seeing, please give me a thumbs up. Leave comments because my gang knows that's my favorite thing is those comments. So without further ado, let's get back to the video. A few details before we get started. If you have an idea of what your sign is going to look like or what painting you're doing, and you possibly can, since this is on a r amateur basis, I've sketched out some placement with an idea in mind. Now, if these do not fruition, if I don't actually paint this vine or do this plant this tall, depending on what my how I end up using my brushes, then I can easily re erase them because I've sketched them out with a pencil and I've done a very light sketching. Now, one thing I want to tell you guys, when you use a pencil, the great thing about graphite is it's not permanent and you can take it off, but it will stay there until you remove it. The second thing, if you will always use a white eraser, it will remove all of the graphite and leave no residue whatsoever. So if this ends up having to be up further on here, that's great because I can erase that and very easily place that writing up here. Such as this flower, if I don't do this flower, then I can erase those lines and it'll leave no residue. Now this is a cotton canvas, so it's very white, very starlit white, and that's great. You can, if you needed to, put a base coat on this and then put your other details in it. So I've sketched out, basically this is going to be Queen Anne's Lace. This, I'm planning on it being a dandelion, so it's there for placement. This will be lavender. These, this is actually a daisy. This is a daisy, but I may end up putting a dandelion here as well. This is like maybe a dogwood or a wisteria vine or even an apple blossom. And then these are forget-me-nots, or this could be wood sorrel uh, that's growing here. And it could be a, a violet if you wanted to. You could put a Johnny Jump up here. 
it really depends on what you're painting. I'm putting flowers on this because of my saying. I am very sown to this saying, so much so that I have planned to do it, and I wanted to share it with you. Your life is your garden. Your thoughts are the seeds. If your life is not awesome, you've been watering the weeds. And I just love that. It's so true. So this is kind of the metaphor. Think about it. I've got Queen Anne's lace. I've got wood sorrel here. I have a dandelion. And these are like wild daisies. And I'm planting on another dandelion. And then there's lavender. And then I spoke about this being wisteria or maybe dogwood or apple blossom. So one thing um, is these are actually herbs and they are all beneficial to our body and they feed us. So this is my garden and this is how I see the world. Everything has a use and herbs we know are the most beneficial to us. They are our medicine. So with that being said, let's get to painting. The first one I'm going to work on is this Queen Anne's Lace. And right here I have some Green Forest by Folk Art. And I have some Thicket as well. So blending is when you move your brush back and forth. So I'm touching one on one side and touching one on the other. Try not to get them mixed up. But you'll blend them next to each other. That way you can easily touch one then the other. Queen Anne's Lace has a little bit of brown and even like a gold. So I'm going to touch this gold and see if that will give me what I'm looking for. And here's the brown. This is actual maple syrup. And I'm touching it on the same side as that green forest. And maybe these three, maybe these four will actually give me the color I'm looking for. If not, I'll paint over it. And I'm going to be pulling upward. So I'm going to be on the chisel of my brush and I'm going to lay it down I'm going to like push it and hopefully y'all will be able to see I'm just dragging it upward all the way up now I have other branches coming off of this so because we're on canvas it takes the color really good so once again my green forest my thicket blend it Pick me up a little bit more, blend it some more. I'm touching the gold and I'm touching the maple syrup. And hopefully you guys will see the maple syrup is going upward. The gold is down here in the bottom. And I'm just pushing it out just taking my branches outward just like that taking this and going out there's another one and now I've got something going on here <clears throat> with my branches now I can work all of my painting on this particular plant or I can move over here and and work on my dandelion and so I pretty much can make my leaves from off of the Queen Anne's lace now what's unique is I can take the green the thick the green forest and the thicket green forest and the thicket I can put just a touch of gold in there if I want to because this is for the actual um, pieces that hold the Queen Anne's lace. So if this is going to be a bloom or a leaf, I have to decide. And maybe this is going to be a bloom coming off of it. So to show you guys so you can see closer what I'm doing, now this time I'm going to come towards the branch. So the Queen Anne's lace is very distinct in how it comes inward like umbrella. So think of a umbrella when you do your Queen Anne's lace and I'm just bringing it inward and I can come up here and do that on this one so think of an umbrella how an umbrella would be and stay on your chisel bring it inward 
and then once again depending on if you're going up here or not so it might be enough paint on there that I can do one here and see how it's my paintbrush is starting to spread out so I want to keep that in there tight And they're all going up there. They're all meeting up. So I still have some paint on here. So let me do a large one. Let this be the center. And there is the top, so to speak. So I'm bringing it in, bringing it in, bringing it in. And I have my yellow, gold, brownish color going to the outer side. My brown's coming inward and my yellow's on the outward So get some more gold on there just to make sure and the way the leaves are they're kind of elongated and straight so you're gonna kind of lay your brush down so to speak and that way when you hit you got a little bit of a branch there and so if you wanted to you can kind of come off the branch you'll lay that down to a point because they're kind of a uh, they're elongated and narrow. They're really narrow. So that's not very close, but if we needed to, we could flip our brush and come down the other side, make them more elongated. Then I roll my brush again, make them more elongated. And see, that will give you your highlighting color on its own. So we've got our green forest, we have our thicket, we have a little bit of the maple, and I'm picking up some oats here to see if that gives me a better color for those leaves. Because they're really kind of a brownish green, so to speak. So let's try this one. Let's go here, lay it down, bring it up, roll the brush, push, and pull up. Just like that and those the lead this is a smaller bloom more in the background that I've made there so let me come a little closer and then I'm rolling my brush laying it down going back in there make it more elongated these can be more like this they're more straight uh, because the younger leaves new growth so to speak a little brown with that. Let's see what we get over here. We can maybe do one here. And if you watch me, I roll my brush. I come next to the branch, pull it out, and run out of paint. Rolled it again. Go down that side. And they'll give it that look that we're going for. They don't have to be perfect. Remember, these are painted. So I'm going to work on this a little bit. So let's work on some of the other leaves on here. And I'm just going to pick up some brown and some green forest. And I'm going to blend it right here. Because I want that to hold when we're going up through that canvas. I got my green forest. And I'm going to go like on the stem itself. And put these. And just carry them out. And kind of go upward. I'm rolling my brush. And I'm kind of making some leaves along that stem. And I need some here on this branch.
and just add the leaves where you think it needs some or if you have a photograph that you've been looking at you can definitely uh, use that as your guide Okay, let's work on the dandelion over here. I'm definitely picking up green forest. And I'm going to pick up some of this yellow oak. And once again, I'm going to lead with the green forest. Remember, it's broader at the bottom than it is at the top. Now, the leaves on a dandelion, guys, are really like a sword. And they are very, very strong and broad so to speak narrow but broad and put a little bit of gold in there too and the way that I do them I don't try to be perfect on them at all because they lay really flat to the ground real close to the ground so I go up when I do them and I do a circle and then I come back once again I go up I do a circle and then I come back. That creates the beginning. Okay, so it's got a little bit of uh, some changes there. It's got a little bit of deviation. Now, the dandelions are very upside down, so or uh, sword like. Dandelions are very sword like, so I'm picking up green forest. Now, since I've already got this part done, if you really want it to be in proportion, I'm going to roll the green and bring the gold towards me. And remember, I've got this piece already gone, going there. So you can kind of come down like this if you want to. Just kind of, let me show you. Just kind of, I'm coming off of this and I'm just doing kind of a wiggle so to speak and then I'm going to go to this side and I'm going to once again come into that oval and just kind of not be perfect because they are very strong now that I've got that part I can go back up here and put that oval back in so it looks more like the dandelion and there's this one's kind of laid over, so to speak. So we'll try another one. Once again, I got the green forest. I'm going to blend that in. A whole brush. Because you really should use some extender with this. I'm going to touch that gold. And this one, we're going to make him more sword like so I'm gonna come down here close to the bottom and I'm gonna bring him out then I'm going to just do one side and then this part I'm gonna let it go kinda outward Bringing that oval back up there. Bringing this. I'm laying it down. As I come down here to the end. Alright, so we got two leaves on that dandelion. Now I need one more. to Just to kind of satisfy me. So, I'm, I'm real close down here. I could literally lay it down here if I wanted to. But let's say we put one in the background. So we're going to go right here on the stem. 
we're going to go outward and we're going to bring it inward we're going to go outward make an oval and come back inward okay and then that'll leave us some room that we can put some details down here in the bottom now since the dandelion has kind of a little uh, well it has kind of a little bulb so to speak we're going to make that bulb up there but down here underneath it has a collar and that collar is like a V and I'm actually going to make one over here and I'm just using the chisel of my brush And then I've got this little bulb up here that I've made. So we've got that going. Now, lavender has a uh, grayish green leaf. Now, the cool thing is we can take this thicket. Let's blend that over there. In there. And we want this to be kind of grayish. So let's take some of this oak and blend it in there. Now I've touched me some white after I've mixed all those colors in there. You guys are going to love making the lavender. So we're going to do the greenery of it first. And then we'll go back and put the lavender in. <clears throat> so I'm going to start up here. And I'm just going to every other, every other, every other make pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling we're just kind of making our background for this lavender put one over here just a little bit of green just kind of putting it there because we'll make the lavender more apparent Get in the background. Just dashes and dashes. Back forth, back forth. Like a crisscross effect, guys. Just kind of put it in there. Don't have to be accurate. This is more greenery showing because it's closer to us. So I'm actually using, mashing my brush now more. And I'm just putting it in there. This. Make it look like there's some kind of in the background back there. Make that lavender really tall. Now daisies have a real green leaf so let's use some of the thicket and I'm going to touch this yellow over here for my daisy because I'm going to bring it down uh, well we need to make it thick so let's turn our green to the bottom and we're going to go up and put let that yellow be on one side so picking up my thicket again touching my yellow and we're going to let that yellow be on this bottom side now we we've, we've got our green made so let's make our leaf and the daisy leaf's going to be kind of oval as well on this particular flower i'm going down here to the bottom going up turn it over going up now to make it look that one's got the detail to it so you don't have to drag back but I'm going to pick up some yellow just a tad and I'm going to drag it through there just to give it a little bit of light now over here I was going to put another daisy or I mean a dandelion and here's a daisy so I need to make 
my stem for that daisy. Picking up my green, touching my yellow, and I'm going to come right here. And then over here, we've got another dandelion, so to speak. So since I've got this green going on here, this thicket, we're going to do our uh, leaves over here. So all we're doing with this is we're bringing them down. Because these are going to be like wood sorrel. So we're just dragging it down on the chisel. That makes them really narrow. These leaves. And really on a sorrel, the leaves are like a heart I haven't the space, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so let's do this dandelion. This mixed up, which is a pretty good color, this green forest with this gold going in it. And once again, like a sword. So I'm going to come really pretty close here and we'll just bring it up like an oval. And then for my downward sword, just kind of wave. And then with this one, I'm going up and it's going off of the canvas. So we'll just bring our wave back in like it's on its side, like we're getting a profile of it. more of that green forest pick up the gold then here again we're going to do the same thing this is going to be laying downward so we've got our leaf built for it we better go ahead and do our stem Broad, go up on the chisel. I'm going to make our little ball again. Just a little call and do our collar. So our collar is like little V's. Stand on the chisel. got our bowl. Got this one made. Now up here on this branch, we can make it brown or we can make it green. That's really up to us. And since I've got so much of this gold and green going in here, I'm going to give it a little bit of deeper green with the thicket. This is the green forest with the gold. A little bit of the thicket. Let's see if we got any more of this brown left. Let's see how far that gets us. I'm going to start up here in the corner. And I'm just going to follow that line. Because remember, I drew it with a pencil. Now it's time to get into some, a few colors. I'm going to try this white and see if it will show up and see how well it shows up. I do have that gold and a little bit of green. Anybody that's ever looked at daisies knows that it has a little bit of greenish gold to it. Unless they're just real bright. So if this shows up, we won't have to make them a different color. So it's real easy. We have 12 o'clock. Six o'clock, 
and I'm starting outward, coming inward. Three o'clock, nine o'clock. Outward, inward. Three o'clock, twelve o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock. And that's showing up pretty good, so let's stay with it. Let's try and do a Just a little bit of green in there, just a hint. You don't need a whole lot. Now you can just start doing the same thing. Go to the same broad, the same outness between these two points, unless you're doing a Shasta daisy. One, two, three, four. A lot of times you can get about four in there. Two, three, four. Okay, so we've got that one daisy. And yes, I know it's green. Don't sweat it. We're making our start. We have our dandelion here. And we have our Queen Anne's Lace. So, that Queen Anne's Lace, I'm mixing a little bit of green in there. With that white. We got those two that we can get in there. Now remember twelve, six, three, nine. That's when you're doing your daisies. Now, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is going to be a Shasta daisy for sure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? My three doesn't show up too good. <clears throat> That's pretty much the daisy. Now we need to do our Queen Anne's Lace and we need to do our Dandelion. These wood sorrels are a pink. And I don't know that I got any pink out here. I've got some berry wine here. I'm going to pick up the white and do the berry wine and I'm going to blend right beside of it. Okay, touch, touch. Let's see what we can do over here. And pretty much the way I've got this sketched. You can just really follow the lines. So it's just outward, inward. Outward, inward. Roll the brush so that the berry wine's on the outside and the white's on the inside. Little C's and then little C's. Don't worry about the center. We'll do that in a minute. All right, let's do it again. Outward like a comma, come inward. Roll the brush. Outward and inward. Roll the brush. Outward and inward. Roll the brush. Outward and inward. Do the same thing down here. Roll the brush. Outward and inward. Out, in. Need some more wine. More berry wine there. Comma. And a comma. Now up here I left this stem, so I know I need to do that one. And I want to make this one blend a little better, so I'm going to go right over top of it and bring it in. I'll go right over top of this one and bring it in. See how it's... You don't want to mess with it too much. Okay, guys, we're going to do our violet for our lavender. So I've got my purple, or this is actually violet pansy. So I'm just working it into my bristles. And just back and forth, back and forth until you get it loaded. Make sure you touch it again. 
Now on this particular one, we're going to be using just a touch of white. Just like that. Now, the white is going to be coming downward. And the cool thing about doing the lavender is you can start about anywhere. I generally start about midways. And you're on the in you're on the top of your chisel, the flat of your instead of laying it down, you're gonna be straight up and down. And we're just going in there and putting little buds and just stay straight. You can go right over top of that green, right inward with that green, and you're doing a back and forth like we talked about a while ago. So see how I'm just back and forth, back and forth, because that's how lavender grows on the plant. Just stay straight up with it. And just pull it in. Then you can go up there and just put some little silent ones, as I call them. And make sure your lines are short, not long. And as you'll see, I did the pink. I had that very wine. And I added a lot more white and went back over that Shasta Daisy. There's a little bit of green in the background, but you know what? Everybody makes mistakes, and you don't want them to be too perfect because, well, I'm not a pro at all I just love to paint and I'm just this is a very amateur painting this is for me personally I'm not being paid to paint this this is for me this will be in my home and see if you want more deepness you just go back and get you some color and put it in there that way you just customize it and make it look like what you want it's your garden okay I think that's pretty good so we've got our little Shasta Daisy there now we need to work on our vine up here and you can do actual flowers if you want to. Being this is a white background, I'm probably just going to pounce it. And now that I've decided over here what I'm going to do with this dandelion, I'm going to actually erase that pencil. So we'll leave that alone before we really mess it up. Alright, so we need to get our pouncing brush or you can use your stencil brush. And this is the pouncing brush. And I have some green with white right here. And the way you do that is it's just up down. You pounce it in the paint. And that works its way up the bristles. And I am picking up that one that's got the green in it. And make sure that my paintbrush or my scruffy brush up down up down up down is touching that white now we're going to try to get this to show up for this Queen Anne's lace now Queen Anne's you're just right above it and that white is not showing up so good so we're going to have to put some green in there in order to get it to really show up I'm going with the the green forest green make it show up more that green and I may have to do it and then go back over it up down up down up down just pounce 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 and just stay just above those little branches we created This is what I call a foul-proof brush. See how I'm just dancing it across there? And I'm keeping that in the background because I don't want to mess up my little violets. 
All right, now we need to do our dandelion the same way. And we can real easily pick up this gold over here, what's left of it, and put it into that same bristles with that green and that white. And we're going to make our dandelion ball. Just stay on the height of it, guys. Stay right there on the height that dandelion. Okay, so got that one. Hopefully we have enough for this one. Stay right there above the ball that you made and go on it but not color it in. See how see how we can still see that ball in the background? And that's how you know you're staying on the height of it. You're staying up there at the top of it. Making the wish ball. And voila, we have that done. So, we need to add some stuff up here to our vine. So this is what we're going to do. I have some purple and I have some berry. And let's do some with the berry. And the white with the green. And we're just going to just randomly, like it's wisteria. Now for some interest, I'm going to add some of the purple in there. And you could have done, but I could have done both of these at the same time, but I really didn't know where I was going with it. So let's just do a dab. See how I'm on the edge of my brush? It's on the very edge. Now, this little brush right here, guys, I'm going to get it wet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just for some interest, I'm going to pick up some of that green forest in there. And I'm kind of making it inky by adding some water to it. And I just want to go right in here and just do like a little bit of green going in there so it don't look so colored with that so it does look like it's got some binary going in there okay so we got that done okay yeah hopefully you guys can see uh, that what I had left over this is a type of dry brushing but it's kind of an inky and that place that we made that bulb we got in there I'm just trying to just kind of put some wisps coming up so that that dandelion looks a little more natural not so much just like a ball give it some realism there okay so you guys seen how I did that just kind of pulling off that and go from the center outward stay on the point of that liner <clears throat> we got this situated up here we can do a little more up there if we want to maybe some of these areas I can go back over so it looks like there's a little bit of binary going in there. Alright. So that's looking pretty good, guys. It's plain, simple. It's just got what I, all that I want.
All right, now that inkiness, that little, I want some brilliant green in the center of my Shasta Daisy. And I'm just taking the point of that brush. Now, take the bottom of your handle, dip it in your white. Make sure you got it on there pretty good. And on the centers of your forget-me-nots, touch, 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 touch. And we are done there. Now you can, with that little bit of inky that's on the brush, that little bit of ink we had going here. I usually roll my brush in there because it's kind of watery and it will pick it up. Right here on these forget-me-nots, if you want to, you can do little teeny tiny lines. You don't, this is not required. This is only if you feel comfortable Pull away, pull away, way. And so you can make that look like it's veining for the look for the petal. so small you just barely do anything there okay so we got that now right here around this daisy I'm gonna add some of this little bit of this yellow I have over here actually I could do this one this yellow ooch and just kind of dot around the outer skirts of it so that that green is still in there but you've got the yellow going you just well you can that particular color is thin enough i can do the whole thing leaving that green in the background once again touch your handle into your white because you're only going to need a tad and instead of doing straight down we're going to do the edge just barely around the edge sideways side of the handle see how I'm kind of working it in there all right so that's got that done for us Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. So all I like now is putting my words down and uh, getting that done. So that's going to take a little bit of time. You could use a toothpick or you can use this brush. And uh, I might try to put that on there and just speed through the video so you guys can see me working on that. But at least I have them pretty much where I want them. I'm probably going to go up here further with your life as a garden and then start coming down all right guys i want to show you a trick if you dampen your brush this is where i smeared that paint while ago if you dampen your brush with water and just kind of on a canvas you're going you're using acrylics if you can get to it you're just going to get it wet and kind of tickle it with your brush because you're getting that paint thinned out enough that you can pick it up and so we're just using our brush like a scrubber almost and try to do that and then you're going to take your towel and press to sop it and that will help that if you just if it's really worrying you and you really want to get it off of there and then that way you can just kind of work it like a scrubber get it wet and move that paint you don't want to overdo it because if you rub too much you might just cause more 
issues. And that looks like the best I'm going to get that, but I don't think it'll be noticed too much. All right, that's about as best it's going to be, and I happen to be able to see it. Now I'm going to work on those letters. And guys, this brush right here, this basically it is a Filbert brush or a um, bristle brush. It will write almost like a pencil as long as you stay on the tip of it. And if you lean it or lay it down, it will make your strokes broader. So to keep them narrow, then you just stay on the tip of it. Just like writing with a pen or a pencil. Now what I did is I actually wrote my words with a gel pen, a very fine point gel pen. Then I went back with this brush and this is a little bit slow but it's worth it because you'll be more accurate and it'll be neat. So the last thing I wanted to add is make sure that you sign your work. Sign and date it. Initial it or sign it and date it. But always sign and date your work. And it will give you something to go back and look at and go, wow, you know, that was when I was really beginning or just get, had been out of it for a while, just get back into it because painting is just like anything else. You have to practice. And if you've not been painting for a long while and then you go back to trying to paint, you have to retrain yourself. And that's basically what's happened to me is I'm just now been painting and you guys have been seeing a lot of my beginning painting where I'm picking it back up again. I used to paint all the time and I had other things going on in my life. So I'm just now getting back to doing the painting and I'm having to practice because there's a lot of things that I have forgotten and you can tell by my painting that it's not very good <laughs> it gets it done but it's not nowhere close to being the best it could be and just practice just don't regret or dread just have fun enjoy it it's very very relaxing and can reduce stress and it's healthy it's very healthy it's one of the best hobbies you can have is to paint or draw or color any kind of internal self-expression so i just wanted to show you guys that i got all of that written out i'll have to clean it up but those smears uh that was my fault i got in a hurry started erasing it when the gel was still wet but I'm not worried about it because it's really not going to show up that bad. And you could make your lettering more straight, cleaner, whatever. But whoever is the author of this poem, I would love to give them credit for it. So if any of you have ever seen this poem before, you know who the author is. By all means, please let me know so that I can give them the credit for this poem i absolutely love it and i would want to make sure that i am not uh, causing any harm or doing anything illegal so if anybody happens to know who the author is please let me know as soon as you know it and uh so that i can give them credit and now i'm going to sign and date it and i'm going to just put mine down here inconspicuously in the corner a lot of times I try to use Elizabeth, or I'll put EGM and the date. So I'm actually going to attempt to just write my name. Voila. Now, sign and dated. Okay, guys, that's it for the painting. If you enjoy what you're seeing, Subscribe to the channel by clicking on the red subscribe word. When the window comes open, click the bell. You are now part of the game. 
you will receive notification each and every time I put up a new video first before anyone else. Mm -hmm.